Dave Gardy here live at the Washington Golf Centers with Bobby Grace himself after an excellent presentation. Bobby, you had him, you had him. They were just, you know, putty in your hand. You did a great job. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, Washington Golf Centers. I've been doing business with them for, oh, the better part of a decade. And I know uh, they run a professional house here. When I heard I could do a demo day and I heard they had a repair center so we could do our alterations of things right on the spot, I wasn't going to pass it up because we've got the best technology on the tour and here's a chance for me to get it across to the public. You did a great job. You're a great player in your own right, but you got into this designing. How did you get interested in this designing clubs and the tech optic? Well, I saw a few of my buddies doing it out on the tour. I saw uh, uh, Scott Cameron was the last one, actually, but I saw T.P. Mills, Truett Mills, doing it. Uh, I was selling his putters in Japan for $3,500 a piece, and it took me a year and a half to order them. Uh, that pretty much piqued my interest. Then uh, Tad Moore uh, hit it big on the tour. And his putters also went to $4,000 a piece over there. And I said, man. And I couldn't get any of those from the distributor. They sort of only sent them to Japan. So in 1990, I decided to start rounding up guys like machinists and engineers uh, on the computers and uh, started to make my own putters. I wanted to make them for collectors and the tour players. Uh, obviously, out of my garage, it was going to be an interesting uh, start. Uh, but, you know, I would take, I'd make 20 a month. I'd sell 10 of them over in Japan for $400 a piece, and I would bring 10 of them to Japan, or to, out on a PGA Tour and give them away. So it was pretty much a wash there for a while, and uh, until guys got them in play, like Scott Simpson played in the uh, 92 U.S. Open at Pebble Beach with one of my putters, and I saw it on TV, and, and that was it. I was hooked. I mean, I was going to do this as a main goal in my life for a long time. What's one of the biggest mistakes you see people making in putting that you see all the time? That you say, gosh, I could just get this one thing out there. Well, first of all, um, the balance and the weighting is probably the worst mistake I see. I see people cutting putters down to 32, 31, 30 inches without compensating for that and weighting it back up. Uh, the shaft cup becomes too stiff. Um, the head feel is gone. Uh, before you know it, you've got a putter that's not only not balanced, but it's, the performance has pretty much been taken out of the putter. Uh, we wrestled with that all the time since 93 and 94 when we did the Fat Lady putter that Nick Price and the Pipsqueak that Annika Sorenstam took right to the number one position in the world. Um, we wrestled with adding weight as putters got cut down. Annika was 33 inch. She had extra weight in the bottom of her Pipsqueak. Um, had to do that to get the head feel back. So we did this with the Amazing Grace putter that I designed a couple of years back. It didn't have the front weights that we had designed in it. We had to add those one at a time for collectors that were calling saying, I've got to have this head weight back, and finally got it through my head that I was going to design a weight system that would allow me to alter without having to do major surgery with a milling machine for each putter. So today, what was some of the feedback you got about the putters you showed people today? I mean, it seems like they're really interested in this putter. It's really drawn a lot of attention. Well, when they see, obviously, uh, you know, we've won $31 million on the tour for the last 20 months. That's lovely to brag about without paying any guys on the tour, which is very unusual. When they see the alignment of the putter, when they hear about how, how it's forgiving, you know, you can hit it all over the face and it still goes dead straight, doesn't lose its energy, distance, or anything. When they see the technology of how we've gone out of our way to make the most expensive putter we could, you know, not, not as a goal, but this is what it is. We had to make it the best way we could. It's expensive but it absolutely outperforms anything in the industry. When they used it and put it with their own hands, hitting it way out on the toe and the heel, and seeing what I was saying is totally true, it was a slam dunk. Then if I could stay here with another 50 putters, I could sell until 7 o'clock tonight. And you've been selling them left and right. Yep. Now, one of the things you see in the tour is, of course, the famous belly putter, and you're trying to be as comprehensive as possible in offering all the technology. You've even got done a little, uh, you know, new investigation and come up with a design for an adjustable belly putter to, to weight and size people with. Yeah, when I would bring the belly putter out on tour, uh, the worst thing you could do was show up with not enough inventory. The most common belly putters we saw out there was 43 inches, you know, 43 and a half inches, 44 inches. Then you'd have the guys like VJ Singh that walk up to you and say, I need 47 and three quarter inches. Then you'd have Azinger say, I need 48 inches. And you're going, it's a belly putter. Man, that's almost like a long putter. Before you know it, you're bringing a dozen belly putters out on the tour with you. And before you know it, you're bringing 15 putters. And I went, wow, this is crazy. Um, we would generally only need four or five, but which four or five would we bring and it would be you know, the wrong one. So finally we said, well, if we can get one that would be a telescopic you know, fitter right on the spot, we'd only have to bring five on the tour. 
which when you're bringing 40 putters, you don't want to bring stuff you don't need. Right. So um, my buddy, Bob Evans, who's my number one tour tech guru, he's a club fitter, he's a club designer, he's been you know well-rounded in the entire industry uh, for many, many years, uh, longer than I've been in the business. He was working with me on where he says, I can easily, I was doing the plug system, which was working, but he says, oh, I, I can figure this out. So he thought of this telescopic belly fitter that we laser engrave the different lengths right here and the different lengths for a regular putter. Uh, so it allows us, it's actually squeezed to where if you turn it, it moves easy, and then you turn it again, it tightens up. So it's crimped oblong. We call it the Oblonger, because uh, Doc uh, Oblinger back home also helped Evans with it. So we, we, we threw his name in there, the Oblonger. Mm -hmm. We don't sell this to make money. We provide this to our key accounts, like Washington Golf, so they can easily be able to fit some people with belly butters without buying 40 of them. You know, it, it, is this legal on the tour? Well, no. It's non-conforming for use until you recrimp it and you freeze it up with 5-minute epoxy. I can make this a legal putter in eight minutes, which is really cool. So if I have too much beer the night before my belly expands, I need to resize. I could have it in my bag. It doesn't count as 14 clubs or anything. Well, it, yeah, if you've got one of those adjustable bellies going on, okay, you probably don't want to freeze it. You want to own one for, you know, if you're playing with your guys that are a little forgiving on the rules. <laughs> well, that's great. So this has been very successful. Now, can you buy these uh, adjustable putters? Um, not really from us, no. We like to provide them for what they're built for. They're really built to be able to fit and sell belly putters because uh, if you don't have something that's adjustable and it's quarter inch, half inch, you know, minute little changes, somebody could work with it for 10 or 15 minutes and get it really nailed. But if you don't have all those exact adjustments, you'd have a hard time fitting something because you're going to be freezing things at the wrong size and then have to, you know, unfreeze it. You're going to have to heat it up. It's a nightmare if you don't have one of these. You see people buying both types of putters. What's the general ratio between belly putters to regular putters? Is it that much of a fad or is it really happening? Well, today I was busy. <clears throat> people were sold on the technology so fast. I didn't even have a chance to present the belly putters today. Um, they went with the regular length. Um, people that have problems with direction, uh, people that have problems with, uh, I don't want to call it the yips, just even general nervousness, you know, that where the putter's waving and they have uh, some difficulty with putting. The belly putter is a home run because from six and eight foot, especially four foot, it's so steady and stable. Uh, I could see why the, the tour players who don't use it complain mm -hmm. because it's a huge help for the person that needs it. It's not necessarily taking totally all the skill out of the game. You still need to learn how to putt that 30, 40, 50 footer because it's hard for the longer putts. What's the proper, just last question, how would you properly putt with a belly putter? Oh, well, putting with a belly putter, uh, I, I'll give you a couple of quick tips because most people don't realize um, where to anchor it. They don't realize what angle of the shaft you're trying to promote, uh, nor your posture or any of that. Um, most people put it right in their belly. That's not so. You don't want it directly in your belly. Your belly's in the center of your body. You're putting this way. You need to release the putter. If you have it in the center of your body, you're going to be releasing it too early. And it's going to restrict the release. Okay. If you have it about an inch to the forward side, if you're left with the other, then it is anchored in a position where you can release it without any restriction. So when you set up, if you take a look at this angle, okay, you want it a little bit back in your stance. You don't want it here. You don't want an angle of the shaft ever like this. Mm -hmm. If you see anybody even putting regular putting that way uh, with a regular length putter, it's going to add loft, it's going to add the skip and, and hop, it's going to be, uh, you know, not helping you out roll that ball. So if you angle it at an attack angle, I call it, it'll enhance the roll of the ball. Generally, that is putting it back in your stance and putting this forward. So both hands low. It, it, what this does is train your shoulders. It trains the V. Like a triangle, yeah. Exactly. This trains it. Uh, I have a nine-year-old at home. I taught him how to putt first normal, because he's always had to have that. I've also built a belly putter for him to teach him how to do that, because I'd like him to use a belly putter until it's deemed non-conforming, which it could happen. So I'm not saying it's not going to happen. But my, my son's going to be ready for both, 
but I would like them to be mastering the belly butter because I think it's a, a more stable way to putt. Well, great again. Bobby Grace, uh, Premier Club Designer from McGregor, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Here at Washington Golf Center, Dave Gardy here live at the Washington Golf Center, where we got more people who want to buy some more McGregor putters, so we're going to let Bobby get to it. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks.